please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. A lot of talking points today, of course, the, the biggest has been the PNB issue that's led to a bit of a weakness, uh, quite a bit of weakness actually for PSU banks uh, in general and uh, Bank Nifty as well. But the market overall is still doing fine uh, and is quite okay. Let's see how the last hour pans out. Uh, this closing bell, I am Anuj with me, Surabhi. Hi, Surabhi, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon, Anuj. I guess 10,000 crores of that uh, fraudulent, quote-unquote fraudulent yeah. amount of PNB. I guess you can't really ignore that. It's a huge figure. But uh, thoughts on the market action overall? I mean, yeah. once again, it's a day when the mid-cap index is outperforming the uh, benchmark indices. Mm. Though uh, the advanced decline, I mean, you've been making that point that today it's not as much favoring the advances, uh, you know, as what we saw in the earlier part of the week. Which is okay, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, would want to see... If you know whether something more comes out of this whole uh, PNB issue. You know this mm. is country's second largest PSU bank that you're talking about, Surabhi. And uh, you know the the market does not. I mean, we'll find out whether it you know you know it was just uh, you know one off or you know th things improve from here. But the amount, you know, the sheer amount, uh, you had to read it twice to make sure that you know what mm. you're flashing was right or not. Uh, uh, so I, I think that clearly has been the one reason. I think that's bigger reason that PSU banks fell today instead of you know the the uh, issue from RBI. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I think the market would have absorbed that and it would have moved on. But this fraud issue, you know, I think that really is the one which sort of put second uh, round of pressure on the market. By the way, Allahabad Bank's numbers flashing on the screen, not looking too good. Yeah, 14.38%. So, I was 14, just looking at the PNL yeah. gross NPS, 14.38%. And there's a massive loss, 1260 crore net loss versus profit of uh, about 75 crores. So. so Huge I provisioning know, I, I, again. I don't I mean, know what I, these guys <laughs> are doing. Yeah. <laughs> again, the same story. I mean, there's a huge amount of provisioning that uh, they have taken. Mm. I think over uh, 2,000, uh, you know, 44 crores of provisions. I'm guessing many, many of these banks now waking up to the fact that they need to provide more. And clearly, with the new rules coming in, I mean, I think provisioning requirements. That's a unanimous view that we've been getting. Right. And today is that kind of a day where mm. you know, uh, even an BOB has fallen, even SBI mm. has fallen. So mm. obviously, Allahabad Bank uh, is falling. Uh, uh, but you know, the other interesting bit today has been the return of the NBFC trade, Surabhi. Mm. You know, you've seen a huge buying in NBFCs and that's coming at the expense of PSU banks because when that PSU bank rally had come, that was at the expense of NBFC. So that mm. trade has returned, but a lot of mid caps have still made new highs. So all in all, I think quite okay. Uh, it's just that this, this PSU bank and this uh, PNB thing, I think that hasn't gone down well with the market. Absolutely, which is why we will spend a fair amount of time talking about these PSU banks in today's show. Here are the headlines. It's a quiet Wednesday on the Lal Street. Key indices trading with minor gains. Mid caps take the front seat once again. That index is up about half a percent. Banks are the weakest link today after the Nifty Bank is down over half a percent following the Reserve Bank of India's new guidelines, the new constitution for non-performing assets. NBFCs rise on expectations of lesser competition from PSU banks. PNB takes 7% cut after the bank detects a fraudulent, unauthorized transaction worth over 11,000 crore rupees in a Mumbai branch. CBI sources say that uh, it has received two complaints from PNB with respect to designer Nirav Modi and uh, transactions so, which could be worth around 10,000 crore rupees are under suspicion. MSCI's February review adds to weightage of Reliance Industries, Bharti Airtel and Petronet LNG, uh, while Bharti Infratel slips 3% after its weight has been cut by 35 basis points. In key earnings today, Sun Pharma's US business is likely to remain weak and commentary on Halol inspection is going to be the key monitorable. For Tata Power, a CNBC TV 18 poll sees revenue rising 11%. Jet Airways is expected to report numbers as well today. Okay, how should you position yourself in this last hour of trade? We have uh, Ashwini Gujjal and Mitesh Thakkar now joining us with uh, closing strategies. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, Ashwini, second round of selling in the bank nifty, in fact, uh, is now making the lows of the day. Your thoughts on how to approach the last hour and what would be the stock calls? See, while, uh, you know, PSU banks, uh, they have been uh, taken to the cleaners, Yeah, Ashwini, I, Ashwini I'll, I'll come back to you in a bit. I think there's a, a, a problem with your mic, so I'll just, uh, you know, res resolve that and come back. Uh, by the way, let's just want to, uh, you know, put some more time on those uh, Allahabad Bank's numbers, uh, uh, some more details flashing. Okay, Ashwini, go ahead. See, while, uh, you know, PSU banks have been taken to the cleaners and there are multiple issues, fraud and RBI, etc., etc., the bank nifty is down only 200 points. I mean, on a different day, uh, you know, similar things could have led it down to 500 or something. 
So my sense is that uh, it's getting absorbed fairly well and uh, possibly today is the kind of day where people want to get long on the uh, bank nifty and once you know PSU banks how much can they fall uh, once that's over then I think private banks again take on leadership and they move on because PSU banks have been declining and have probably lost all of the recap uh, day gains so that way rest of the market seems fine there's just one pocket of corporate bank stroke PSU banks uh, which is looking like a problem so if I have to hold something overnight uh, you know possibly I won't mind uh, you know carrying home a bank nifty having said that uh, RIL is a buy with a stop of 930 target of uh, 965 uh, Balkrishna Industries is a buy with a stop of 1180 target of 1240 and uh, Sonata Software is a buy with a stop of 308 target of 324 Okay, um, Ashni, take your picks. By the way, the market is slipping very, very quickly. Yeah. Uh, you will have to attribute it, obviously, to the banks. Let's pull out the intraday on Yes Bank as well. That's a stock that's down 4% now. There's fresh selling on SBI and other PSUs, as Anunch just pointed out. Uh, some of the pharma names are coming under renewed pressure. So Sun Pharma, Sipla, all these stocks have seen pressure. And Anuj, I mean, I, I don't want to be a nitpicker here, but let's just keep the global context in mind again, because today, again, we've, we've been rank underperformers, whether you're looking at Asia or you're looking at the way European markets are trading right now. But Anuj, what does this tell us? The fact that I mean, now suddenly, whatever little gain that we were sort of building mm -hmm. on, there seems to be some sort of an unease that, that the screen seems to be indicating. Yeah, but, you know, but uh, sort of, you know, it, the things are very, you know, uh, very volatile right mm -hmm. now. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and you know volatility is not your friend uh, in you know if you if you're a bull so obviously right now you don't want to take aggressive positions having said all of that this is a market which is not breaking down either uh, mm. so you know uh, you, you know uh, for example on any other day uh, you know you could have easily had the, the nifty falling 100 points if you had you know market doesn't like you know the word fraud you know yeah. and if you know, the country's second largest PSU bank has reported something as big as that. Yeah, uh, to in a Mumbai branch, it's not an obscure far away. Exactly, you know, in the Mumbai branch. branch yeah, uh, yeah. You know, you could e have easily yeah. fallen about 100 points. So let's just put it this way that, you know, we are no longer in the kind of market that we were in 2017 where every dip was being bought. Uh, right now, the equities have, you know, the, the, the obvious that one way trade ha that has got disturbed a bit. Uh, you want to see where things stabilize and after mm -hmm. that, you want to take a call. So nothing wrong with that. Uh, and advanced decline even as we speak right now is in favor of advances so mid caps are seeing a lot of buying interest mm -hmm. uh, couple of issues here or there uh, I, I don't think you know you would look at one day underperformance and say okay we have started a fresh round of selling for our market i think uh, th I, I would not like to take that call okay fair enough mitesh good afternoon let's get your reading as well uh, what do you make of the day and of course trading ideas for the last half hour yeah, good afternoon. It's a very quiet day. In fact, uh, you know, what I'm observing, Surabhi, is that uh, most of the uh, volatility and trend indicators for the Nifty are kind of turning flat. So we might uh, see even narrow range emerge over the next few days. And we are looking at 10,400, 10,650 as the immediate range, but that could shrink. Uh, having said that, stock specific trading remains, and I have one uh, buy and one sell. Uh, Balkrishna Industries is looking very strong, so buy with a stop at 1169 look for targets of uh, 1235 and amongst the PSU names after you know kind of trying to b build some base around the 108 109 mark Oriental Bank has finally broken below that presumably uh, presumably on this bad news so I think now keeping a stop at 108.3 could be a good short trade for targets of 99. Okay pa. For now, let's just uh, address uh, some of these issues because PNB is now down 10%. Let's just pull out the chart once again. And that stock is now down about 9.5%. Uh, so there's a second round of selling which is now taking place in PNB and it's spreading across the, the various banking names. Uh, uh, even State Bank of India is now down about 4%. Just see the intraday chart. Uh, Bank of Broad, of course, is still holding out relatively better because you know that's the one where you saw a lot of buying as well yesterday. But pull out Bank of India. That stock is down about 7% right now. Allahabad Bank uh, is down quite a bit. Uh, some statements from Gitanjali Gems, of course, uh, they have not had any unauthorized dealings with PNB or its officials. That's the word from Gitanjali Gems. Uh, let's bring in Mr. Tulsian from sptulsian.com. Mr. Tulsian, good afternoon. Your thoughts on uh, you know this whole PNB saga and uh, the, the amount looks quite large. See, this is a very serious thing, you know, which has, in fact, when I read this uh, press release in the morning at 9 o'clock, I was wondering that probably why the market is not reacting this much, you know, the, on this, on this, such a big news. Now, if you really take a call <coughs> on, the, on, the, on the fraud which is seeing, you know, what I've understood, 
that this is in respect to the non-fund based limits you know maybe having issued by the pnb and in fact the quantum of the of the losses are not known whether to what extent these uh, letter of comfort you know whether it is lc or it is bank guarantee which has been used by nirav modi and in turn you know having encashed with the other banks maybe globally abroad so no unless until you know the crystallized amount having you know come as a, as a liability because merely saying that this is just a contingent liability for pnb doesn't suffice the purpose because this seems to be a case of 2011 as per the sec- statement of you know having issued by the dfs department of financial services secretary also but this is a very serious thing you know that why if it is a matter of 2011 how come this has not got surface you know even while having the audit we just can't you know brush aside because by issuing the non fund based limits you know by the banks is a very much part and parcel of their business issuing lc issuing the bank guarantees and you just can't say that that is just a contingent liability which must have been you know kept aside or which have must have been wrapped under the carpet because the quantum is so huge 11700 crore so if 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 the god forbids if the liability doesn't get crystallized then this is probably will not be seen to such a serious thing definitely the actions and all cbi will initiate the with the the will will carry out the probe but if it happens then probably this will really be you know shaking the the psu banking industry to a great extent okay and uh, uh, mr sen uh, so the, could this have uh, repercussions for some of the other banks as well uh, uh of course today has been a completely different day but uh, uh maybe it's, you know pnb has disclosed it uh, maybe some more disclosures could come see anuj how can you say that those things you know because unless until we really get get to know all these things as i said that there are so many things so there are so many uh, skeletons in the closet unless until they start coming out one by one it is very difficult i don't want to sensationalize that yes there may be the things like this but this has been very with the i would say that the this is the lethargy and in fact connivance and collusion of the psu banks in respect to the gem and jewelry unit and in fact i have been cautioning this you know there are about maybe 10 15 companies listed on on the on the stock exchanges where we have never taken the call the the positive view on this gem and jewelry because the kind of round tripping you know the exports packing credit non fund based limits whatever you may call it that you want to explore and you know you want to go get, get indulge into the fraud can see you know get getting happened in uh, in, in this trade so yes i am keeping i am very apprehensive and if 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 these similar kind of things will come out of the closet in the, in the form of the misuse of the non fund based limits then that has to happen with the with the with the gem and jewelry unit and in fact you don't see you know everyone people start comparing all other i don't want to name those companies of about 15 companies listed on the bourses they all start comparing that with the titan that that that's ridiculous you know you just can't th- have the same corporate governance comparison with the other stocks and in fact i have cautioned on those friends you know maybe couple of weeks back and many of the companies those who used to be the the high flyers of about couple of week, decades back have got to go, gone and vanished you know in fact uh, i don't understand one that swatch diamond you know the name which have been changed to forever diamonds and all that they were the second largest defaulter of 7000 crore nobody is talking of that media have all been talking of the vijay malya and all those things that do those, those things are right but have anybody really fi- tried to find out that what has been the recovery process of the second largest fraud fund based fraud of 7000 crore having uh, committed by the suraj diamond that is uh, jatin doshi you know so i i what my point is that yes there are lot many skeletons in this gem and jewelry business and i won't be surprised to see these type of things coming in maybe in the form of packing credit where just the just the packets have seen having exported whatever you hear from the from the market sources so i'm very apprehensive on this particular industry and i i i, I won't be able to take a general call that these things will keep happening and coming out in respect to other banks but if it happens then that will be seen very serious and very damaging for the for for for, for the for the stock market okay mixed bag right now from tata power uh, the first number which flashed on the screen was net profit so that obviously was better than the street estimate so you saw a bit of a rally in the stock that rally is getting sold into a bit uh, because if you look at the revenue number and the ebitda number they have both missed the the estimate so a uh, top down it looks like there's a bit of a beat because uh, the ebitda number is also below the estimate but there's a net profit number which is higher than the poll so we'll find out uh, the reason for that but ebitda is a good 400 crore lower than what the market thought uh, would be the case with tata power is, uh, one of the notes uh, to the pnl anuj which is note 5 which whether i think reiterating there's a you know sale worth about 400 million dollars that's coming in 
for uh, sale of shares in um, uh, one of the Indonesian Indonesia. associates. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that uh, has still not been concluded. They're saying that um, that particular amount has not been booked. So that's one of the clarifications uh, that has come through with the results. But uh, mixed bag, it looks like for uh, Tata Power. On that note, let's also welcome in Anand Tandon. He's joining us into the conversation this afternoon. Anand, good to have you on the show. Um, since we are discussing this number right now, uh, any thoughts on Tata Power? Because you know it's a it's a pretty complex business to understand right now. There's a restructuring underway. Then they've been trying to sell off Mundra. Uh, would you have any uh, views here? I think they are doing the right things as far as the power sector goes. You know, they're trying to reduce their cost of coal. They're trying to get a Mundra operational, or at least perhaps get sold off. If it gets sold off even at a rupee, I think it will be a great relief to the company. They are deleveraging. The one part that I don't like is getting rid of the defense business. Clearly, that would have been something that would have added value over the long term. If it had been aggregated into this company, it would have been great. But overall, I think as soon as the power sector shows signs of life, Tata Power will be one of the leaders and I don't see much downside from here. Okay, don't see much downside from here. Uh, that's uh, of course uh, Tata Power. Uh, uh, Mr. Wilson, perhaps a bit unfair to ask you on Tata Power, but uh, just on these numbers. But uh, uh, any any thoughts on the on the first couple of lines that you have seen? See, you know, the numbers are not looking exciting, and I have never, you know, kept a positive view on Tata Power because unless until they get rid of this 4,000 megawatt of the UMPP projects, you know, I don't think that the, the, the there is any point in taking a call because actually that has been, you know, putting all the loads on the entire other operations also of the company. So numbers are not looking very comforting. Yeah, on that, again, there is no fresh headway from the company, sir, that I can share with you. I mean, they've simply reiterated what we already know, that, uh, you know, the company continues to incur significant losses. Lenders and management are in discussion with the potential buyers, that is, discoms, to arrive at a solution, but nothing material. I mean, nothing that tells us that there is a definitive sort of deal that seems to be in the pipeline. That is Tata Power for you. On that note, uh, let's take a quick break. Uh, coming up on the other side, bank stocks are the key focus points, most of them trading lower after the Reserve Bank of India comes out with a new constitution of sorts for non-performing assets. Does this mean advantage NBFCs? We will put that question to our next guest, R. Sri Sankar of Prabhudas Biladhar. Welcome back. So there is a significant loss of momentum even in the broader market. Uh, a couple of stocks that were doing well, I mean, just some examples. For instance, Radico Khetan was seeing plenty of buying today. Uh, but that seems to be now altering its course as well. More weakness on PSU names, of course, Allahabad Bank uh, dealing with a 7% blow. Uh, then other stocks like uh, PC Jewelers, which were doing better just about an hour back. Yeah. Some pressure, Anuj, some is pressure. quite quite evident. Some pressure is quite evident. I, I think uh, this uh, mm -hmm. this whole fraud thing clearly, you know, because today you are underperforming. Today is you know you can't pinpoint and say that global markets are weak. Uh, uh, you know now the Nifty is at the low point. Uh, uh, PC Jewelers, I think uh, this could be just a case, you know, where you know you just don't want to take any exposure in any of the jewelry stocks not named Titan. So mm -hmm. uh, that could be the <laughs> the reason that you know you are seeing this kind of decline in PC jewelers as well. But uh, yeah, I do take your point, Surabhi. Now, you know, you're seeing a bit of selling pressure. Advanced decline, still in favor of advances, though. Yeah. Well, you know, that will be interesting if uh, that uh, well, it's line It's almost neck to neck. Yeah. Only 66. The margin is now yes. 66 stocks advancing. Those lines mm -hmm. are almost meeting. Let's say we're getting set for a very, very critical 30, 40 minutes of trade. Good time to get some more trading ideas. And Sandeep Bagle is joining in. Good afternoon, Sandeep. What are you working with? Good afternoon, Surabhi. I would go with a buy in a Tata Motors DVR, stop loss of 210, target 222, and a sell in a PNB, stop loss 152, target 140. Okay, thanks a lot for those uh, trading ideas, uh, Sandeep. Uh, uh, Mr. Wilson, one stock which we have to discuss is NCC, post those uh, numbers. Uh, uh, last quarter, the numbers were bad, but we saw that big rally in the stock nonetheless. This quarter, the numbers do look good, but the stock has rallied a lot. Uh, your thoughts on uh, how, to, how to approach this buy? No, the numbers are in fact looking quite good because if you really see the PBT of 149 crore, I am comparing on a YOI basis against 84 crore in spite of the top line seen at flattish at about 1900 crore. I think the numbers are really seen to be quite good because in spite of taking the exceptional expense of about 30 crore having provided in this, this quarter against 8 crore YOI, 
the PAT has been quite high at 100 crore against 58 crore. So numbers are definitely looking interesting and uh, the kind of uh, visibility, growth visibility which we see for this sector probably is giving advantage to NCC. Okay. Anand, uh, your view specifically on, uh, you know, the biggest of the uh, PSU banks, SBI today, I mean, Allahabad, Allahabad's numbers just came out a, a while back. I mean, the numbers don't inspire any confidence with respect to asset quality. Would you look at picking the bottom on any of these stocks? Well, it looks like they've just been postponed for now. I would think that, you know, the argument was being made and I was making it also that, uh, you know, it is time to look at the corporate facing banks. But now with RBI insisting that you start writing off more aggressively, I think what will happen is that the uh, expected improvement in asset quality and uh, you know the uh, provisioning requirements that were supposed to get lower will now not get lower for this year. But that has impact on the overall earnings growth also. Don't forget that you know one of the largest components of the earnings growth for this year was supposed to be the PSU banks. Almost 17% of the incremental growth was supposed to be coming from the modeling of uh, reduction in uh, in, in terms of the increase in earnings from PSU Bank. So which will mean for the whole year, the index itself will have to be now knocked down a bit if you assume that PSU Banks are not going to be contributing much. And for now, it doesn't look like they're going to be contributing much. So I think another six months before you start re-evaluating re that position. Oh yes, just take a look at the FNO market now. The top 10 losers are all PSU Banks. PNB, OBC, Bank of India, Allahabad Bank, uh, Canada Bank at number five, Union at number six, SBI at number seven, Andhra at number eight, uh, syndicate at number nine. Uh, okay, tenth is not a PSU. Tenth is Yes Bank, which is down uh, about four percent. Of course, a private bank. So, but after that, you have a couple of others like uh, Indian Bank and NB, uh, 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 Indian Bank, of course, also and IDB Bank uh, as well. So, a lot of these stocks seeing uh, quite a bit of uh, selling pressure. Uh, Mr. Tulsan, before we thank you, we of course will continue this discussion uh, with our next guest as well. But uh, quite a bit of buying in housing finance today, led by Canfin Homes. Uh, uh, DHFL also looking good, India Bulls housing also uh, looking quite decent. you think these stocks can go back to their previous highs? So, you know, it is just a matter of time, you know, you have to define the timeline. They can, you know, much more, you know, surpass all those levels. And in fact, this is what I have been saying for maybe last couple of months when this, when, this, when this segment has not been performing, that yes, we have been keeping extremely positive view. And in fact, Canfin Home, I have been giving a different argument totally because if the Canara Bank is looking to exit from their 30% stake in the company, where so many buyers are, you know, seen, seen interested in lapping up this, that stake and it all depends on the expectation of the new buyer coming in, you know, which people are talking on the street like maybe kind of any P investor or maybe HD, HDFC kind of things. And if that happens, I won't be surprised to see the P expansion happening by 50% for Canfin Homes. But coming specifically on, on, on all these housing finance company, we have been keeping extremely positive, maybe barring Rapco Home Finance. Otherwise, we are positive on HDFC Limited, India Bull Housing Finance, Devan Housing, and maybe the GIC Housing kind of stocks. In fact, all are looking quite good. Maybe PNB Housing doesn't look to be very very attractive at, in terms of the valuation, and Rapco Home Finance. These two will, will just be the clear uh, avoid for the time being, but otherwise extremely positive on housing finance sector. Oh yes, uh, Canfin Homes uh, has been a beast of a rally for that stock now, 6.5% higher uh, on that stock. Mr. Tulsian, thanks a lot uh, for uh, your time today. Uh, uh, of course, uh, all of this is coming at the expense of PSU banks today. As we discussed, the top nine losers are all PSU banks, uh, so led by PNB, of course, OBC as well. Uh, PSU Bank Nifty right now at the lowest point. Uh, uh, let's invite R. Shishankar of Prabhudas Leeladhar, uh, who now joins us on the phone line. Shishankar, good afternoon. So, uh, big rally right now in NBFCs, and we have seen, uh, of course, PSU Bank slipping quite a bit. Uh, do you think that's a uh, that's a good good sort of trade right now to to go short on PSU Banks and to buy NBFCs? I'm not sure about whether to go short on PSU Banks, but uh, what news we have had from uh, the PNP uh, doesn't augur well for the entire sector, and definitely PSU Banks will be under pressure. So um, that uh, that's that's what we are seeing right now. Okay. Um, I, whatever you say, banking is clearly not a go-to place today. Those numbers from Dena Bank are also not looking pretty at all. There's a, a loss there that we are seeing. Sri, uh, so let's just sort of break this down. I mean, one is obviously the PNB issue, which has left a bad taste in the mouth. The other is obviously what happened over this one-day holiday uh, with respect to the new NPA norms. Now, um, 
I mean, do you see that impact playing out on stock prices or is it already factored in considering where PSU banks are trading? See, uh, let's, uh, let's look into both these aspects. One on uh, uh, the new NPA norms or what uh, the RBA norms, not the NPA norms. Let me put it across as RBA norms. Uh, the new norms, what does it say? Probably incrementally for any company or any, any kind of an, uh, uh, problem uh, account, which is a problem in terms of non-payment, you wouldn't be eligible for any CDR or 525 or S4A, etc. Mm. So within that 180 days uh, period, you have to have a uh, what do you call resource plan and then invariably uh, these accounts need to be classified as an NPA and uh, provision mm -hmm. accordingly. So uh, generally what has been uh, spoken about the banking system is probably when an account starts slipping into has a problem, everybody tries to nurse it for some time, whether you can revive it. So the revival won't happen uh, if it doesn't happen immediately and uh, it has to be referred to the entire mechanism of sure. recall the loans. So now postponing of your problem doesn't happen. Okay. So it will get uh, sure. recognized much early. That's what it is going to okay. change. All right. Yeah. Shri, thanks a lot for yeah. that quick take. Uh, uh, unfortunately, run out of time. Uh, almost 3 p.m. Uh, things not looking good as far as the bank nift is concerned quite clearly. But we'll take a break. And up next, of course, we'll get you the, the BDST calls by today's sell tomorrow. And also our alpha manager segment, Ravi Dharamshi, CIO of ValueQuest Investment Advisors, will be with us. Welcome back. Uh, well, uh, the market right now under a bit of selling pressure, uh, not reflected in the Nifty, not reflected in the mid-cap index either, but uh, clearly reflected in the in the banking pack. Uh, Bank Nifty now down about 250 points or down about 1%. Ashwini Gujarat and Mitesh Thakkar will tell you what to buy or sell today for reverse trade tomorrow. Ashwini, could we be going through a bit of a underperformance once again for Bank Nifty? Could today be start of that? Uh, or is today, you think, just a one-day affair? And of course, your BTST calls? See, the problem is that uh, in our country, investigation happens by leaking out information. So if uh, from tomorrow, you know, the story will start that X Bank is also involved now, Y is also involved, you know, then it creates a problem because nobody will take long positions either on PSU banks or Bank Nifty. So, you know, just the word fraud, uh, then, you know, there is no value at any level. So that people should be cautious of because RBI story was over in the morning and we should have recovered given the global cues, etc. But this fraud business can linger on. And if it lingers on for the next 15, 20 days, it will create a lot of havoc. So uh, that people need to understand and uh, you know appreciate that uh, all PSU banks come under the cloud uh, because of this. Having said that, uh, I think PC jewelers, uh, you can sell uh, with a stop, say, around uh, uh, 380, 382, and look for targets of uh, 362. Tech Mahindra is a buy with a stop of 600, target of 625. And uh, Arvind is a sell with a stop of 404, target of uh, about uh, 380. Now, uh, Bank Nifty, it's quite likely that uh, we are closing very close to you know that recent low we made up of about 25 360 so hardly 150 points away another bad day and the bank nifty correction resumes so uh, that would make also the nifty come off and test those you know 10300 type of zones so uh, today's movement on banks is definitely not comforting because it's backed by macro news mm, take that point ashwini yep the banks have let the bulls down today for sure Mitesh, let's get your uh, trades in. One buy, one sell you're going with? That's right. I think uh, BPCL is breaking below very important pivot of uh, 465, 462. So keep a, uh, keep a stop just above 465. Look for a 452, 450 kind of a target possibly tomorrow early in the morning. And HUL on the intraday charts is showing some reversal. So I think this could be a good long trade. Uh, keep a tight stop at 1342. Play for a 15, 20 point kind of rally till about 1365, 1370. Okay, that's some BTSC call. Let's invite our next guest, Ravi Dharamshi, CIO at ValueQuest Investment Advisors, now joins us. A lot of you, uh, of course, would have known him, uh, those in the in the market. Uh, 
Uh, Ravi, of course, is an MBA in finance from McKellum Business School. Uh, he also spent four years at Rare Enterprises and has been in market for 13 years. Uh, Ravi, good afternoon. Uh, you know, good to have you in our studios. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks, uh, Anush, for inviting me. So, uh, you know, you've seen some market cycles in the past. Uh, uh, your thoughts on the kind of cycle we are in right now? Uh, a lot of people say we are in early stages of bull market. Some say we are in the middle of the cycle. Uh, where are you placed right now? We are definitely not at the early stage of a bull market. So I strongly believe that uh, the expansionary phase in terms of monetary loosening cycle started in 2009 mm -hmm. after the crisis. And uh, we have been in like ninth year of uh, bull market now. So no way can we say that this is a beginning of a bull market. But at the same time for us uh, uh, in India, the economic cycle seems to be just picking up now. Uh, yeah, so earning cycle has started coming in strong now, mm. and uh, some of the high frequency data point that we monitor in the economy has really started picking up. So uh, eco market cycle is definitely ahead of the curve, and uh, earning cycle is now picking up. So I believe uh, we are in some sort of a correction where uh, you know if we spend some time doing nothing and uh, earning cycle keep catching up, then we'll reach equilibrium at some point. So when you say spend some time doing nothing, are we talking about six months, maybe a year? Because 2017 was a blowout year. Um, now are you expecting this range? Uh, if you could define that range, if, that, if that's the case, and then how long in this consolidation patch? So, uh, so 2017 was actually a you know completely anti-volatility trade. So one thing is for sure, 2018 is not going to be that and uh, you know com uh, complacent or something. Yeah. It's going to be volatile, 2018. Uh, in terms of correction timing and uh, extent, I mean, it's my best guess, but uh, unless this manifests, uh, uh, sometimes corrections have a way of, you know, triggering of ca crisis somewhere. Uh, so unless so that sort of a thing happens and an external shock is there, I would believe a 10% to 15% correction on the index, and which we already witnessed. Mm. Uh, so it just means we might Not revisit. Not on the index, in individual stocks, but on the index, yeah, about 8%, I yeah. guess. I mean, I have no idea exactly. But mm -hmm. And maybe 30-40% uh, uh, already on the mid-cap side. So those kind of, uh, in terms of time, maybe another three to six months is what I would presume is par for the course. Let's talk about the big story today, banks. Uh, you know, because we, you had that recapitalization. There was a lot of hope, you know, a lot of money would have gone into some of these PSU banks. And once again, you know, you're thinking, is, this, is there something more, you know, what else would come out? And once again, the same question that, is it throwing, you know, more good money after the bad? Uh, your thoughts on banking space overall and PSU banks in particular? No, I think finally uh, the step taken by RBI yesterday, this is probably the final nail in the coffin. And we were till now, you know, uncovering layer by layer. And this is going to, you know, strip them to the bare, uh, last bare bones. So I think the end of the cleanup process has begun. I think it should last next two to four quarters where the power power sector and PS get recognized and uh, the evergreening of uh, the bad loan stops. Mm. So I think the recognition part should happen in the next uh, two to four quarters. Maybe market might factor in sooner than that. And uh, I would actually, uh, you know, think of uh, a contrarian bet now. I mean, I've, we've been trying to avoid this sector Mm. forever but uh, now i would like to prepare myself and be selective in looking for a good corporate bank okay interesting um you would still want a corporate lender from the private sector side or psus and then where do nbfcs fit in this entire puzzle because even nbfc stocks most of them are you know nicely 15 20 percent off the 2017 peaks yeah but 15 percent i mean taking uh nbfcs nbfcs are off 15 percent after rising 10 20 x that's true that's true so uh just that 15 per 20 percent uh, correction doesn't qualify as necessarily a you know a bargain entry. or something yeah. yeah so the absolute value uh, does lie in the corporate banks on the private as well as on the public side uh, I, my first preference is to go with the private because their ability to raise funds is much better than uh, PSU banks and PSU banks fundraising usually has been dilutive for the minor minority shareholders so mm -hmm. I would like to even within a PSU uh, basket, I would like to you know, try and come up with a bank that will manage to turn the cycle around and uh, do a dilution at a better valuation. If that's the case, then mm. it doesn't matter actually if it's PSU bank as well. Let's talk about some more uh, themes and some which have really worked. Uh, one is QSR. Uh, 
uh, jubilant, for example, the kind of rally that we have seen. Uh, uh, alcohol is also something that you like. Uh, so that's also a space where earnings have been a bit volatile, but uh, largely good of late. Uh, uh, but again, the issue here is uh, valuation with some of these names. Uh, so uh, how do you find equilibrium here? So uh, you're absolutely right. Valuations uh, are on the higher side. But I think from the company uh, performance point of view or the sector performance point of view, uh, there's a lot of tailwind. The raw material prices are actually crashing. I'm talking about alcohol. Uh, mm. uh, GST, which was a big overhang, uh, has been taken away. Uh, the inputs were uh, left out of the purview of GST. Otherwise, they would not have, uh, the inputs would have been in under the GST and uh, mm. output would not have been. So, uh, and volume growth is finally coming back. Some of the states have started giving price increases. So the tailwinds building up in the sector tells me that this sector is going to have a good time from the next one, two years point of view at least. Mm -hmm. On the QSR side as well, this move from 18% GST to 5% GST is actually a very, very good move. And uh, uh, the, this will of course bring the inflation down as well, but uh, there's a lot of benefit that these companies will uh, derive by keeping their uh, price point lower. And we are actually witnessing some of the uh, same store sales growth that have been uh, reported by Jubilant Foods or... Uh, uh, Even Westlife for that yeah, matter. Westlife yeah, Westlife. And uh, they're like crazy, 20% SSSG. I mean, mm -hmm. of course, it's coming off a ba low base quarter, but still, I think the, those are really number, uh, eye-popping numbers. Another space that you like, a uh, pretty complex space, is speciality chemicals. Now, given mm. again that there's been a huge rally in 2017 already, what part of speciality chemicals do you think is still a good play? What sort of products, what sort of chemicals? What yeah. intermediaries? <laughs> no, so it's a very difficult uh, sector to explain, uh, and precisely because you don't know what uh, the drivers are, whether they are temporary or secular in nature. So the, right now we are benefiting from the fact that China is uh, has a huge clampdown on, on pollution, pollution yeah. and that is leading to shutdown in industries and India is benefiting because of that. But over a medium term, I feel also the European customers and the American customers, they want to develop a second source and uh, India is actually well positioned to take advantage of that. So companies that are better integrated, uh, companies uh, that do not rely only on, you know, benefiting from this from China trend, but is trying to uh, you know, diversify into new products, new lines, and is ahead of the curve in doing capex. I think those are the companies that you would want to focus on. Mm -hmm. And I believe as a uh, sector, it has a good 10-year runway and there should be good winners out of it. I mean, it's still not a very big sector in terms of market cap. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, the biggest company, uh, if I leave out the petrochemicals and agrochemicals, will not be more than 10,000 crore market cap. You know, there has to be a one big, a couple of big yeah. companies out of this sector as well. Okay, stay on. You know, I have a couple of more questions for you, but for now, I just let me just address the market once again because uh, as we speak, the Bank Nifty is now down 320 points. Uh, would it be worthwhile to just pull out the contribution plate of the, of the Bank Nifty because, you know, while 33% of the Bank Nifty is essentially HDFC Bank, uh, and of course, there's ICICI and Access as well, SBI quite clearly has put a lot of pressure on the bank nifty today. 103 points from SBI, about 12% weight in the index, down about 4% today. So straight away arithmetic on that. ICICI access, so clearly that the dichotomy is once again visible. The HDFC bank, Indusin, Kotex doing well, but there's too much pressure right now on uh, from uh, the other part. Uh, uh, Ashwini, so uh, you know, that's the, that's the dichotomy and that's the big one, right? Because HDFC Bank has the largest weight. That's not falling, but still the bank nifty is making lows of the day. I mean, HDFC Bank is up half a percent. Yeah. Now that can't compensate for access down three and a half. Uh, you know, State Bank down uh, four and a half. ICICI down, uh, you know, almost two. So that way, you know, it looks like uh, the bank nifty correction is restarting. And with all this business of, uh, you know, fraud, etc., I think people are taking short positions home. And we have also initiated the multi-day uh, short because uh, this is a fairly large move, 300-point move. It's taken out almost the entire range uh, mm -hmm. of the correction. So tomorrow morning, if we break, uh, you know, uh, the other day is low, uh, chances are Bank Nifty correction will accentuate. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, you know, PSU thing, uh, this is the start of, I think, something, not the end of the correction. So 
So I think PSU banks will shed uh, more weight. Oh yes, in fact, now the Nifty is also uh, again uh, trying to break the 10,500 mark, and the advance decline is now in favor of of declining stocks. Uh, but anyway, we'll address that. Uh, last question from my end, uh, Ravi, for you. Uh, uh, autos. Uh, we have seen a big rally. Ashok Leyland, for example, uh, has had a phenomenal rally and not impacted by correction at all. Uh, your thoughts on that in particular, if you would want to venture out? No, I think, I think uh, CV cycle is just picking up. Uh, this year, we might actually end up with a, you know all-time high number for probably for CV this year. Mm. Or if not this year, then next year for sure. So on the passenger vehicle front, I mean, I think the stocks have run up quite a bit and there are not many easy players available. But on the CV cycle, I think there is still further scope to go. The utilization levels have not peaked yet. The margin expansion can still happen, and uh, so uh, the numbers are very strong on the ground. So I would believe CV cycle has some more legs to go, and not only OEMs but even the ANCs, uh, CV cycle linked ANCs can uh, also benefit from this. All right, uh, Ravi, it was a pleasure talking to you. Uh, I hope you know we can have more conversations in future. Thanks a lot Thank for you. taking time out for us today. We'll take a break and uh, be back with market closing. Not looking good as we step into the last 10 minutes. Thank you.